Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now today we have a bit of a different style of video. Today we're going to be reviewing some flight simulation products. Obviously that's kind of what we do on this channel, so let's go ahead and review some of the cheaper budget products and see if they're actually any good. As you can see, we have the boxes behind us. Yes. So let's go ahead and start with this box first and let's go ahead and review it. So this... This is the Thrustmaster, a Thrustmaster USB joystick. As you can see, it's a very budget one. This isn't even a whole task joystick. Let's go ahead and review it. Um, as you can see, this is USB connection. So let's go ahead and unbox this and get it connected and see what this is like. Okay, so we can open it here. It's very difficult to do with one hand, but let's see how this goes. Okay, as you can see in here, you can already see part of our flight controls. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, and here looks to be the joystick itself. Yeah, this is our joystick here. Before we actually test it, let's go ahead and first of all get rid of this. Bruh. Okay, let's go ahead and talk some numbers for now. As you can see, this is the one I bought here. Now this is a £25 joystick, but now let's go ahead and connect it to the sim and see how good it is. So we can do this by first getting rid of this here. It's very hard to do with one hand. Uh, there's the rubbish there and we can take our USB connection um, this is going to be very difficult to do and we can plug it in the back here of my very messy USB cable I always So as you can see, that's now connected to the PC here. So we can go ahead and try this out. It's quite a decent sized cable. Uh, definitely long enough. Let's just chuck that out of the way there for now. And let's go ahead and connect up to the flight simulator. So as we can see, while well, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator is loading in the background, um, we have our, we can check this shows up, as you can see, connected here. And it shows up here as USB game controllers. We can go ahead and click properties and we can check, do a quick control check. So here's the joystick so we can do... There we go, as you can see our axis work is working. Uh, we have our buttons, so in fact let's go over the buttons. So we have this button here, um, I would probably use this for landing gear. We have this button here, this little button there. We have this little trigger button on the back here. There we go, that side button there. So we have button here, we have a button there. Um, and the trigger and that little side button there um, but as you can see this all works also to point out we have a little control hat here so as you can see it moves this is our point of view hat um, so we can go ahead and try that out as well so as you can see we're here in the Microsoft Flight Simulator now I guess we can go to options and control options so let's go ahead and kind of configure this so as you can see we have USB game controllers. We can go ahead and configure all this stuff. We can go ahead for our flight control surfaces. So let's just set this up so the elevator axis. We can go ahead. There we go. That should be good. And we can validate that. Um, that's working just fine. Now the roll ailerons axis. Do that. Okay, our roll systems are working very nicely. Um, let's go ahead and set up the brakes now. I'm going to use this button here, the trigger button, and let's validate that. Power management. Okay, and that's that all done. So that's all the stuff that needs to be set up, I would think. Um, so let's go ahead and save this, and let's go ahead and fly an aircraft. Let's go to Sedona Airport. That's a nice one. Okay, welcome to Sedona Airport on board our very beautiful Cessna 152. This just looks absolutely amazing, because obviously this is a Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's kind of what we expect. Okay, let's go ahead and perform a takeoff now, full power. That's working now i have to restart it for it to work uh, let's go ahead and disengage the parking brake i probably should have done that before go let's disengage the parking brake and we should be good for a departure now full power now i can already tell the materials here are mostly plastic to be honest definitely not the most nicest but let's go ahead and take off here we're doing a no flaps takeoff that's just great okay let's go ahead and rotate now okay and as you can see that worked well and we're dying First of all, I have to say, this is not too bad actually. You know, suppose for £20, this is actually good, especially if you're a beginner or this is your first flight control that you're buying. So I can recommend this. Obviously, I would recommend something more like the Logitech X52 or something like that, but this is still good. Okay, let's go ahead and try a landing now um, in somewhat of a bigger plane. Let's make this interesting now. Okay, so as you can see, we actually have another parcel behind us. 
uh, another box, I should I say, is another flight accessory we have here. Um, this is the, some sort of Marvel headset, the H8321S. Great titling. Um, as you can see here, this is like a, a headset here. Um, but as you can see, it has this microphone on it, um, which I guess would be useful for VATSIM and stuff. So let's go ahead and try this out and unbox this. And we can go ahead and open this up. Now, as you can see, we have our headset in here. And go ahead and take this out. Okay, so I've taken everything out, and this is the headset that we're left with. Uh, looks like we have two cables here. So this is run by a 3.5 millimeter. Is this audio jack? I think I'm not too sure. Uh, this one's for the red one's for a microphone, and this one's for our audio connection. Uh, so let's go ahead and connect this now. And we can try this one out. Okay, let's go ahead and connect it and see if it's showing up here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and put this thing on. Now uh, we can do that here. This is definitely not the best cable arrangement, but that's just great. Okay, and first off, impressions of this. Um, it definitely, the first thing that comes to mind is the build quality. As you can see, it's plastic that's used here. Definitely not the best. Um... It's not the most comfiest, but you know, this is alright. This was only like £20 or something. Uh, we have this here, which is very adjustable, one of those flexible ones, uh, which might be useful for VATSIM and stuff. Um, I'm going to test it in recording now for audio on the flight simulator. So let's go ahead and fly a bigger plane now into Sedona. There's people on the multiplayer as well, by the way. So as you can see, there's people in the multiplayer. Let's go ahead and spawn in, in a bigger aircraft. How about the 747? Okay, here we are, 747, let's just click ready to fly. Okay, and as you can see, we're on board the 747, that's the start, that's kind of what we expected, but let's see how a landing works. 1, so let's go ahead. You can already tell the input's not quite as fine as I would have liked it to be. But it's not half bad to be honest. One thing is though, uh, this throttle control that we had, as you saw earlier. And this has been a terrible landing. Reverse rust controls are working though, that's not always nice. One thing though I don't I dislike about this is it doesn't come with a separate throttle. Um, I don't like the way the throttle's set up, it's not easy to use. And I just generally hate it. But again, for this price point, you know, it's kind of expected. However, there is a T-Flight variant of this, if I can find it. Like this one, this is the HOTAS version of it. Um, I would, If you're getting this, I would recommend this one. Um, it's quite a bit more expensive. Uh, it's about £30-40. Pounds, but I would recommend this definitely, instead of this one. But overall, could I recommend this? Could I not? Yeah, I think I could for... I mean, we have to remember the fact that this is only £20, so this is still very good. But um, I would say to, if you are spending this kind of money, a low amount of money, get the whole task version. And if you can, I would probably just get a Logitech X52, a more expensive one. Uh, but yeah, this is not half bad, I have to say. So yeah, thanks for watching this video, and I'll be back in tomorrow's video. See you then.